Oh, looks like <laughs> looks like we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit. I'm uh, TJ, joined by Trump. Our names are switched around there, uh, but uh, trust me, this is exactly who we are. Trump, how you doing? Oh man, it's been a really exciting day. <laughs> I just came over from my stream. Uh, had to rush the last few cards. Some very exciting cards out there. This will probably be one of the last tournaments we see under this uh, set. Yeah, it's uh, the final feature tournament. So after this, the tournament this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we will know the 7th and 8th player that will be joining us at the uh, ONOG Summer Circuit Grand Finals at PAX, joining Trump, who uh, qualified as the feature tournament number 3 winner. So it is definitely going to be an exciting weekend full of games. Today we're going to be broadcasting Group A. Uh, tomorrow on Saturday we'll be broadcasting Group B. And then, of course, on Sunday we'll, we'll be broadcasting the semifinals and finals. Uh, group A, the players are Chalky and Impact. That'll be the first match of the day. And then uh, the second match of the day will be Silent Storm versus Privet, who we saw take the, uh, the qualifier yesterday. Now... Um, Keep in mind, guys, uh, there's a lot of money, a lot of Geico points on the line today, but the only person that actually needs the Geico points throughout this weekend is Impact, so he's going to be one of the players to watch. If he finishes second or higher, he'll uh, automatically qualify for the Grand Finals at PAX, being the player with the second most EU Geico points. Other than that, the winner uh, gets $3,000 plus that automatic qualification. Uh, Trump, you you played in the feature tournament um, uh I think it was last weekend. Feature tournament number three. Um, looking at these two, the first players' deck lineups, what do you think of them? Um, Chalky tends to be a player who brings a lot of aggressive decks, so uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be... I'm interested in seeing how his patron lines up, if it is patron, and I wonder if the Warlock might be the Chalky special of the more aggressive type of Warlock, which is very rare. Uh, when you match up Warlock against Rogue, I think that Rogue is favored against specifically the Zoo type and uh, against Hamlock, slight favorite there. Uh, the lineups are close enough. If it's Hamlock, then it's going to be strong against Patreon if in fact has it. It's going to depend a lot based on how, uh, what type of deck each one is brought because uh, mm -hmm. Chalky's got three decks which could be either one and Pax got the Hunter and the Warrior which could be Control, could be Patron could be mid range, could be face. We'll have to see. Yeah, and uh, Chucky has sort of had the informational advantage. Chucky's actually been the one casting with me for uh, a lot of the One Nation of Gamers summer circuit for the past couple weeks. So he's had a chance to sort of see these players, uh, a lot of these players, how they play, what decks they're bringing, um, like sort of tech cards that they tend to go with. Of course, they can change it up. They're coming in with fresh decks that they just submitted. Uh, but still, uh, he's since he's been watching these players from sort of their roots in One Nation of Gamers, he sort of has an informational advantage. So it's going to be interesting to see what this is going to be. Impact is is bringing Rogue. He's one of the few players that's sort of brave enough to uh, go away from the warrior, warlock, hunter that a lot of players seem to be bringing. Trump, what do you what do you think of Rogue currently in uh, in Conquest specifically? Rogue's in an interesting spot. I think Rogue is really strong against classes which aren't the top three. So that's the main problem with Rogue. Uh, it's really good against Paladin, it's really good against Priest, it's really good against uh, just those lesser used classes. But against the better ones, it can hold its ground. Maybe it's at a slight disadvantage, if any. Uh, but if you're really good at it, then yeah, perhaps you could push it to be an advantage. Uh, at 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 one point, you do have to bring a third deck. So, the warrior, hunter, and then like your third deck. Maybe you're afraid to bring warlock just because there could be a lot of hunters out there, and warlocks should traditionally do bad against hunters. So, uh, third deck's kind of your flair, so to say. Yeah, and rogue players, it's kind of a, a funny thing that rogue players always think that rogue is favored in matchups where non rogue players think that rogue is. Is uh, is unfavored. So rogue players always think more highly of the class than everybody outside, which is kind of interesting. It's actually had a reasonable amount of success over the past couple of weeks, but there just hasn't been many players bringing it, and um, it's 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 really interesting. 
Um, but keep in mind, guys, throughout the broadcast today, make sure you're heading over to geico.onog.gg. We're still giving away an official TSM PC. Of course, TSM, as Trump knows, is, is an official partner with, with Geico. Um, who is the title sponsor for this event. So if you guys want your chance to win a TSM PC, head over to the website. The specs are pretty nuts. Uh, they're right, if you go to the website right on the front page there, you can see the, the list of the specs. So if you guys want to do that, head over there. Also, you can enter in to get a GEICO quote. It also helps GEICO get sort of a, um, an indication of how many people are supporting their esports endeavors. So if you guys want to see more from GEICO, if you want to see more circuits like this one, big open circuits with lots of tournaments, lots of players, lots of prizes, then uh, show your support by heading over to that website and uh, signing up for, for all the goodies. Uh, I believe the players are prepping. Um, Trump, what decks, what three decks did you bring when you won your feature tournament last week, if you remember? Oh boy, it's something that I obviously should be able to remember off the top of my head, but I've had to prepare decks for so many tournaments that yeah, yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm going to guess I brought uh, Patron Warrior, I brought hybrid hunter and i brought hemlock that's the third one that i'm not sure on okay well that seems like a, a lineup that a, a lot of people uh tend to go with um we've seen a an influx of control warriors over the past couple days at least in the past couple of qualifiers um what do you think a control warrior do you think it, people should just be bringing patron or do you think control warrior has its place yeah, Control Warrior is the interesting thing because uh, unlike Rogue, which is good against the classes which people don't bring too often, Control mm -hmm. Warrior is really good against the classes which people do bring often. It's good against uh, Face Hunter, it's good against uh, Patron Warrior, and Chalky is, to my slight surprise, playing a uh, Handlock. Yes, he is. Uh, I, I kind of had a, a slight guess that he might bring Handlock just because of how many people have been just winning with it most of the lineups that have won qualifiers uh, if they did have a warlock it was the handlock so it's one of those decks where you know people are going to bring patron so handlock is one of the best decks against patron so it's a great counter and, and right away we see impact is going to be playing the warrior and if it is patron warrior we'll have those cards up for you guys in just a second then i think chalky's going to have a pretty decent chance in this one yeah this is pretty much the dream uh Patron Warriors have been starting to tech in a Shield Slam every so often. Kind of a recent innovation. Uh, every the, It's interesting to see, like, over the months, Patron has been dominating, but it's still seeing a little bit of change, sometimes against the metagame, sometimes just as innovations. We've recently seen the Shield Block, and when I was playing Patron, I put in the Shield Block, I was like, oh, I probably should put in Shield Slam, because Shield Block, Shield Slam is my favorite combo. But really, I'm just putting in the Shield Block to counter aggro anyways. And, you know, it's hard to put in the Shield Slam. But the Patron Warriors finally found a moment to fit it in. So good on them. Yeah, it, it sort of makes sense. Like you said, you already put in the Shield Block for to help with aggro, to help cycle you through your deck. At least one Shield Slam just makes sense. And also, a lot of players were sort of getting greedy with how they um, you drop their creatures after both executes were gone against Patron Warrior. So the Shield Slam can be there to sort of shore up those times when uh, you actually need that third removal, which a lot of decks now run creatures where you need to sort of live a couple more turns and the removal really helps. Yeah, this uh, situation is really good for impact in terms of having the Shield Slam early. Uh, he can deal with any of Chalky's giants. Chalky actually had a very difficult turn there where it's one of the nightmares for Handlock. You mulligan your whole hand, you don't get any of the four drops, uh, you tap and then you still don't get a 4-drop, and you're going second, so on turn 3 you can't do anything. Um, so Chalky's just going to really hope that he draws a 4-drop here. If he doesn't, it's going to be kind of a difficult turn. He might have to coin Lothab, and then it would be a difficult next turn. So sometimes the Handlock just doesn't get that 4-drop in. It sure feels bad when you don't. Um, Impact is debating pretty strongly on whether or not to turn up the aggression with a frothing right now interesting yeah i i sort of like this play just because you sort of have to be a little bit proactive with patron warrior against handlock um if you just sit back and wait for them to play threats and try and react to them mo more than likely you're just gonna fall prey to 
the thousands of patron warriors that lose every day to handlocks on ladder. Um, it, it's having the threat out early to force the handlock to maybe play a little bit inefficiently might open you up opportunities later in the game to um, to go. But this is really going to punish him here because I don't think he was really expecting the little that he was saying, well, if he plays a threat, I have shield slam to deal with it. Exactly. That was a pretty unexpected card. And uh, Impact probably wanted to do Slam Fiery War Axe on that turn, but the Lothab shuts it down and uh, it's going to end up basically trading into the Frogging Berserker, which is a good trade for Chalky. Uh, Chalky is running Lothab and Ragnaros, which are two of the kind of anti control tech cards. So that does make the matchup even better against Patron Warrior. We'll have to see whether or not he also ended up bringing some weapon hate to complete the circle of hate against Patron. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Impact doesn't really want to kill this, but I think he's forced to. Oh, he's going to just bravely go for face. Okay. I suppose he can afford to wait another turn to, to remove the Lothab. And apply some damage. Ooh, oh, the ooze. ooze. Well, that's where it gets punished a little. And also, there is the risk that the Frothing Berserker would just get something like a, a Dark Bomb plus mm -hmm. Mortal Coil. But uh, it looks like everything went according to Impact's plan. Impact uh, smirks a little like, oh, my hit was worthless. It's just too <laughs> bad. Yeah. Looks like the ooze is definitely going to be saved for a Despite later on. Um, usually one of the only ways that Patriot can win in this matchup is by being able to set up a Despite, have it survive, and then make a big turn with Patrons or Frothings or both. So, um, going to hold hold on to the O's. One interesting thing to note is Chucky and Impact actually used to be teammates uh, a while ago on Team Coast. Uh, they ended up going sort of their separate ways once that team was, was dissolved. Uh, Chucky did Dignitas. Impact floated around for a while and has found himself a spot on uh, Luminosity. So, uh, maybe these guys have a little bit of friendship. Maybe there's a little bit of a rivalry there. Who knows? Oh, cool bit of history. Uh, Chalky didn't think he was going to have a hard decision on this turn when he drew the Mountain Giant, but there he has another option. Uh, so things are starting to really fall Chalky's way. Ooh, Execute picked up from Impact. He's going to have a way to deal with uh, this big Twilight Drake. The one thing about Shield Slam, though, is uh, sometimes, since you have to take a lot of bit of a lot of damage from weapons as patron, and you don't have cards like Shield Maiden to get your armor back up, Shield Slam can sometimes be a little tougher to use uh, as the game progresses. Like right now, if Impact doesn't draw into a Shield Block, he's not going to have a way to sort of use that Shield Slam on a bigger creature like Mountain Giant. That's right. Um, this game looks fairly even right now. Uh, the Hamlock didn't get to get a good start with a uh, four drop. Um, yeah, it was forced to do the coin. Um, this is a really good rid of the death spite. And on turn five, nothing that strong either. But still, with this stuff coming up, with this uh, kill of the weapon and the giant, and then coming up with Boom and Ragnos, going to be tough for the patron to put in anything together. Even if you do get in there, uh, Chucky has the answer in Shadow Flame. So this is the nightmare of the matchup, uh, where even though the patron got some things going for it, where it got the execute, where the handlock didn't start off with that much pressure, uh, due to not having a ridiculous hand, looks like patron is not going to be able to get in there. Yeah, usually you're offered a small window of opportunity at some point in the game against Handlock to win as the patron, but you have to have the perfect cards in order to be able to capitalize on it. But uh, like you said, the Shadow Flame, the Hellfire, there's so many tools for Handlock players to just stop what Patron's doing. And then all of a sudden, they start setting up for a lethal. All the Handlock has to do is sort of just put up a wall. And eventually with these big creatures, you're going to put the patron on a clock because a couple swings in with the... Uh, a mountain giant are really going to be tough, and now Rag is played as well. Yeah, oof, that's backbreaking. And impact on the last turn had to think a while and then pass basically, and that's a that's a 19 damage swing right there. So 19 again, easy kill. Um, impact couldn't cycle anything, couldn't do anything on the last turn, and now he's just desperately drawing for the execute. I think that was the execute. 
It is. Wow. That's good for him, but that's still not going to be quite enough because what is he going to do with the rest of the six mana? Is he going to use Battle Rage to draw one card? And this is kind of the sadness of Patron. He might have to use some combo pieces just in order to draw one more card, and that is, in fact, what he's going to do. Yeah. It's. I don't know. It's still going to be tough for him. I don't think he's going to be dead quite yet because. No, actually, I think he is going to be dead. If he executes here, he doesn't have mana to armor up. All right, this is probably the better target, but I think that's still going to be game with the Iron Beak Owl, the with double Dark Bomb, and yeah, it's exactly fourteen. That's right. Looks like Chucky didn't miss it, like some people have. So uh, <laughs> we've got Chucky taking a great first game. Um, Good on him on matching the handlock into the patron warrior. That's exactly what you want to do. Yeah, and that's sort of why you bring handlock in, in this format, because the large majority of players... So yesterday we broadcasted um, two qualifiers, the NA qualifier number eight and the EU qualifier number eight. And all, out of all the eight players, all eight of them brought warrior. And seven of the warriors were patron warriors. One was a control warrior. So it's it's a really good format to bring decks that are good against Patron. So and Handlock just happens to be one of them. So um, Chucky realizes that these players tend to play Patron more often than Control, and uh, he gets rewarded for it, getting that good matchup early on. That's right. Pretty much the only regret that one would have on bringing Handlock is that even though it's almost guaranteed at least one good matchup, sometimes you get two bad matchups with it. So, uh, Chalky, great feeling to get that out of the way. Looks like Chalky's got his patron with Harrison Jones. That's an excellent uh, excellent tech choice in this matchup. Uh, eliminates some of the auto wins that happen uh, and also gets you a 5-3 and draws you a card to boot. So... Yeah, Looking it, good. It's it's kind of funny. Um, I've seen an influx of players that crafted all golden patron decks at the beginning, like when patron first started to rise in popularity. Now players are coming in with the only non-golden card that they have is Harrison Jones because it's sort of been an addition that has only been in here uh, about a week. Um, well, some players have had it a little bit longer, but it's it hasn't been around for that long. Chalky is falls into that same boat where I think he has a full pa golden patron deck but a regular Harrison Jones Yep. as we approach into turn 5 uh, we start to see if either patron has the despite into patron into plus one more thing uh, impact has two of those pieces he's going to have, oh he actually didn't play the despite on 4 uh, that was probably because he didn't have the extra piece on top of grim patron so he therefore plays around Harrison Jones and also, just equipping the Despite and uh, swinging at the face isn't that desirable. He would much rather equip the Despite and attack the Frothing Berserker. Uh, so, in fact, should be feeling pretty happy there, and then Jackie will be feeling pretty good about Harrisoning that. Yeah, this Frothing Berserker seems like it's sort of just thrown out there as a, uh, as a bait for the Despite, or as a check also, because... He would be playing around Harrison, like you said, by not playing Despite in a 4, or he just doesn't have it in which case the Frothing Berserker could really punish him. So it's sort of a win-win for Chalky. Either he doesn't have the Despite, and this Frothing gets in for probably a lot of damage, or he does have the Despite, and he just Harrisons it the next turn. So I really like this Frothing Berserker. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things about it, though. Uh, since Chalky doesn't actually have much damage to go with the Frothing Berserker, it seems like it's a play made to kind of just reduce your hand size. And that's understandable, because Chalky was approaching at 9 cards, and sometimes in this matchup you actually just get a lot of cards. In fact, thought through that a lot um, because the Frothing Berserker is one of those ways that you can... That's actually the primary win condition uh, for Patron in the case where the Patron dance doesn't happen in the early game. So, in fact, like, you know, he, he knew this was happening uh, pretty much. Uh, but still a good enough trade to go for it because at one point or another you're going to get that. Yep. It's also worth mentioning that Chalky probably had this entire thing planned because if the opponent played Despite and then Chalky plays Harrison Jones, he's going to overdraw. So I'd say that's more of the reason why Frothing Berserker was played. He didn't really want to, but he had to, for otherwise he would overdraw. 
Yeah, he could have thrown away the coin, but uh, uh, I do agree that that's probably one of the ways. And now, uh, Impact goes ahead and plays a whirlwind effect for Chucky. So this is usually how you patron warrior match mirror matchups go. Like you said earlier, the 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 patron dance is one player will spawn a bunch of patrons, the other player will respond with their own patrons, and basically the first player to run out of activations is usually going to be the one that loses. Uh, a lot of times, it's it's interesting when when the matchup first um, when patron warrior first came onto the scene, players were thinking that the the player to play patrons first was usually the one who had the advantage. But nowadays, it seems like a lot of times the player that goes second, as long as they have the tools to deal with it, um, can have the advantage. Like because you can spawn a bunch of patrons while also making it so your opponent's got a too full of a board, um, and so eventually you come out on top with how many patrons you have because the whirlwind effects will kill off his, while you have sort of the uh, initiative on how many patrons you decide to make for yourself. It's a little bit of an interesting dilemma. It's very true. It's an intricate dance, and it even matters based on how late it is. So I'd say the order of like the goodness is the turn five patron is the best, and then uh, you can only beat that with like a perfect hand, in which case you'd have the advantage. And then uh, if you're later on, then patrons aren't even good because the frothing kills you. But in this case, it looks like it's going to be the case where the patrons were early enough that the frothings can't kill you, and that the opponent doesn't have a counter patron play. So Chucky it's the has sweet a spot. Pretty easy road. Um, a lot of thanks due to that Harrison Jones. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point to mention about the filling up a board full of patrons later on in the game just gives your opponent seven targets to get war ones on to end up killing you with the the frothing berserkers. And Impact's going to try and fight back here, but all the pe pieces that he has in his hand are like the, the, the creature combo pieces. Both Warsong Commanders and a Frothing Berserker, which doesn't help him fight back on a board full of patrons. Unstable Ghoul doesn't either. He has a patient of his own, but just no Whirlwind effect. So uh, Chucky looks like he's just going to go ahead and end the game here with these two extra patients. Yep, nice clean kill for Chucky. Uh, it is entirely possible for Patron, as fearsome as the deck is, to get swept because a lot of the decks right now are built especially in tournaments with heavy consideration of Patron, you can't bring a deck which is going to be like a 30% win rate against Patron when mm -hmm. you're only bringing three decks. So that means Chalky's Hunter, it, he expects it to be at least, I'd say, 40%. If it's hybrid, it's probably closer to 50% of a win rate against Patron Warrior. Uh, against any of Impact's uh, decks at this point, I'd say Chalky's Hunter is probably at worst even mm -hmm. so uh, he's in a good spot yeah definitely in a good spot uh, Chucky has sort of his he's always on the forefront of innovation for uh, hunters um, recently he's been running sort of a um, a hybrid hunter that is basically a face hunter but just with shredders and lotheb this looks to be a little bit different actually because we do see a web spinner plus a hunter's mark. So this one looks to be teched heavily towards the mid-range. It might even be a full mid-range hunter after seeing the hunter's mark. Yeah, that's a good call. When you're a hybrid, you usually can't afford to put in the cards such as web spinner and hunter's mark and handmaster. Uh, those three cards are really indicative that it is the full mid-range, which I do believe uh, ends up being the best choice out of all the hunters against Patron Warrior. Yeah, so it seems like Chalky is going with that strategy of, I'm just going to go ahead and try and counter patrons. I'm going to bring my own patron deck, which he's confident that he can beat the mirror, and then two decks that have strong matchups against patron warrior. So right. you talked plus you in talk, his patron deck, he is running Harrison. So get yeah, exactly. Edge. So you talked about earlier, sometimes bringing handlock, you end up going into two weak matchups. But if you tech all your decks against patron, all of a sudden your opponent has trouble finding a win with that one deck. Um, which if you're going to tailor your strategy around that, then that's going to be the way to go. So it looks like Chucky's going with the strategy of all three of his decks being strong against Patron. Yeah, and like you said, uh, seven of the eight players uh, in the qualifiers brought Patron, and Patron is a deck that you expect to face. 
Um, mm. Even if you bring decks that are up against Patron, though, I don't think you can expect to just win. So it's simply decks that are going to stand a chance against Patron and possibly be slightly favored or even a matchup at least, and then just decks that are overall good. And that's yeah. kind of what the tournament meta is evolving into during these final days before the Grand Tournament. Oh, look. He's got the dream, the Tundra Rhino into the Savannah High Main. Uh, not really the dream of the Despite Equipped, but uh, um, that's what people were dreaming about at when... Uh, it was the card that as soon as Beasts were announced, like in Nax, people were saying, oh, Beast Hunter's going to be a thing. Every single expansion, Beast Hunter's going to be a thing. Tundra is never going to have its spotlight. Yep. Um, Chalky just does so much damage. Uh, reason not to play the Tundra Rhino would just be because that Death Spite kills yeah. it perfectly. It's pretty weak. It's a pretty weak card for its cost. That's right. Even though Chalky had the dream... Uh, still chose not to do it in order to play a card that was going to be more durable, I guess, mm -hmm. or be better against Deathbite, basically. Uh, Impact has a lot of the pieces, but again, because he's put under so much pressure, he has to use. Yep. He has to use the uh, combo pieces like in a rage to just clear the board. Yeah, this is one of the strengths of Midrange Hunter. Basically, you just apply a lot of pressure early on. Patrons have to take a lot of damage to deal with early pressure most of the time. Usually they find a point of stabilization around the mid game and then combo you out. That's how a lot of times it works against the um, more aggressive decks. But uh, mid range hunter just puts on a lot of pressure and then all of a sudden they pop down a high main and that becomes really tough to deal with. Chalky does have some burn in his deck. The rest of his hand isn't that great. At least the Hounds can be used as a finisher if you're pretty far ahead. But... Uh, um, a lot of times, it's it's a really tough card to use against Patron. Yeah, that Savannah High Main is the nightmare of Patron. And in fact, Warrior is everywhere. Uh, he already took six damage. He's looking to take another four, and that's going to still stick on the board. So, uh, Chalky is really close. In fact, it turns out to be surprisingly close to stabilizing. Uh, he does have another shield block, and Chalky is running out of steam. But it might. Uh, I think Chalky is just enough to. Barely finish the warrior, possibly. Um, Impact had to think a bit on whether or not he wanted to get armor there. Was he going to like just barely die? Does he want to sacrifice the acolyte? And he's going to take almost as safe a play as you can while still drawing cards. Um, it's going to be a close stabilize, but Chucky just drew another bit of burn. Yeah, it's. A little bit tough, though, because he really needs to deal with this armor smith. Impact drew three cards last turn, four cards, actually. Three from the Battle Rage, one from the Acolyte. So if he leaves his armor smith up, there's a chance that next turn he just Warsong patrons and gains a bunch of armor. So he has to find the most efficient way here to remove the armor smith, but still apply enough pressure to try and set up for a two-turn lethal. Right, the armor smith is really problematic, and... Uh... Warsong Patron not quite active due to the mana restrictions, but uh, it is definitely something on Chalky's mind. And Chalky had 12 of the 14 damage required that turn. He's going to maximize his slow damage first, basically. Uh, Armorsmith is a threatening card enough to deal with. Uh, Impact does have that shield block, and if he can deal with these minions on the board, he just might be on the road to stabilization. Yeah, once you run the Hunter out of cards, they don't really have a draw engine. So you can basically calculate exactly how much damage you have to play around every turn based off how many cards they've already played. So it sort of comes down to a science once you run them out of cards. And, of course, with your hero power, you're able to negate the Hunter hero power every single turn. And so, yeah, like you said, it's he, he, he is nearing that point of stabilization. Eight mana is sort of that um, the sweet spot that you want to get to. He sees a board that's really good against patrons. He doesn't want to leave any beasts up. He does have ways to remove this, but if he if he decides to go... Well, actually, he doesn't have a way to remove everything. He has to leave something up. Right. Oh, that's... And he's going to do the safety execute. Um, of course, Thorisan is a really tasty play, and you had to find some way to play it eventually. Yeah. Uh, it's just gonna do it, that though. that's going to be... 5, 12 damage. 8, 10, 12, and that'll be enough. 
Wow. So right off the bat in the first series of the day, Chucky makes a statement and takes the first series 3-0 to zero against Impact. So uh, really impressive stuff from him. I, I liked his, his deck choices. He obviously uh, knew exactly what he was doing coming in. He said at the end of the stream yesterday, he said, well, after we cast today, I'm going to basically just prep and try and perfect my deck lineups because he really wants to go to, uh, uh, to PAX. Yeah, he made that look easy, and he made Patron look like a weak deck. <laughs> Fast as 3-0. He, he made it look like a weak deck um, with, I mean, it, it seems like that was his strategy going in, was to make it look like uh, a weak deck. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised if Chalky has a Harrison Jones in his mid-range hunter. Um, I really wouldn't be surprised. It's something that I've seen a lot. I played in one of the qualifiers this week. Uh, I took top eight in like the... EU or NA number seven, and almost all of the mid range hunters that I played had Harrison Jones in their deck. So it's a it's a tournament adjustment that a lot of players are making, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing it in there. So yeah, that was a a really impressive victory. We didn't even get to see Impact's Rogue. Yeah, we didn't even see his hunter. I don't know what type of hunter it is. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I guess he's got the informational advantage going on his opponents now. I'm I'm not sure if it, what what he's gonna have to do, but uh, of course. Uh, how the group stages work, it is uh, sort of a GSL style group, so a double elimination group stage. We have the two matchups, then the winners play each other, then the losers play each other, and then we have that final elimination match. So if you win twice, you move on to the playoffs. If you lose twice, you're out. So Chuck is going to move on to that winners match. He's just one win, win away from securing his spot in the playoffs. Impact now has to fight his way back. He has to win two matches in a row if he wants to make it to that playoffs. So it's it's going to be a tough road for for Impact to come back. And is that something that weighs on you when you lose three times with Patron, who which is considered a strong deck? Do you do you sort of get down on yourself a little bit, Trump? You know, uh, I think if you play ladder enough, you kind of get desensitized to the losing streaks, mm -hmm. uh, even against your run of the mill good Bludgeon players. It's easy to drop three, even five games in a row with the best deck of Grim Patron, so uh, it's fun. You just keep playing your best and you hopefully don't get affected. I, I'm not. Um, and it's definitely a lot easier to go into the winner's match knowing you only have to win just one more match. Yeah, so Chucky's going to be doing that. We are going to move on to the next match, uh, but we are going to have to take a quick commercial break. Coming up next is going to be Silent Storm versus Privet in the second match of the day. Uh, keep in mind, guys, remember throughout the day, head over to geico.onog.gg. Uh, get your Geico quote, enter in to win your official TSM PC, and read up more about uh, the Geico points and um, the grand finals at PAX, which is coming up pretty shortly. But once again, guys, quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. More Summer Circuit action continues right after this.